Frequency separation is a powerful retouching technique inside of Photoshop that can help you transform an unedited image that looks like this into a piece of art that looks like this. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. In today's brief tutorial, we're going to create an action to populate the layers for frequency separation. Let me stress, this is a different technique for frequency separation than is found in other tutorials on this channel. And this is not going to be a tutorial on how to use the technique of frequency separation, simply just to create an action for it. But if you are interested in learning how to use this very powerful retouching technique for Photoshop, then I encourage you to visit the retouching series on this channel where we explore frequency separation in great detail. Before we dive into Photoshop, I would like to ask for your help in growing this channel on YouTube. Liking this video and subscribing to the channel lets YouTube know that there is great content and education to be found here. And when you subscribe, make sure to click the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos go live each week to the channel. Thank you for your support. It means the absolute world to me. And with that, let's dive into the Photoshops. So an action very briefly, if you don't know, is simply a replication of different steps inside of Photoshop. So you don't have to remember all the things that you did. So you can just simply hit a button and it will duplicate all the different steps. When you want to make actions, simply come up to the window here and then just make sure the actions are checked. And then you will get this icon here, which is the little play sign. And that's your actions window. So I'm going to make a folder that I've already made that says frequency separation 16 bits. And then to make an action inside of this folder, I'm going to click this icon, which is the new action icon that will bring up the new action dialog. I'm going to name our action frequency separ separation 16 bit. And if you haven't guessed, this is going to be the action for frequency separation 16 bit, not 8 bit. There are different steps you have to do if you want to use frequency separation for an 8-bit image. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not exactly sure what those are because I never work in 8-bit. I used to work in it a long time ago and I don't now. If you'd like to know the difference between 16-bit and 8-bit, there are other videos on the channel that will explain that and how to process images from Adobe Camera Raw into Photoshop as a 16-bit image. So once we've named our action, we have a couple of little different options. We can give it a function key if we want to, which I'm not going to do. And you can associate a different color to the action. This is if you use the actions window in button mode instead of the standard viewing mode. This way you can kind of organize your actions and color code them. So like all the actions for retouching can be one color and then artistic actions can be another color. And it just helps you to keep things organized as you work. We're not going to do that today because we aren't going to be using the actions in button mode. Once we hit record, Photoshop is going to remember every single thing that we do. So you have to be very careful what buttons you hit, whatever you do. If you hit file and save or close, or you go outside your program into another program, or you go to a different tab within the program, it potentially is going to remember all of that. So be careful what you click on. So follow these instructions precisely the way we do it, and the action should work for you every single time. First, I'm going to duplicate the background layer twice. Our background is already active inside of the layers window and to duplicate it i'm going to hit Control or command and the letter j and i'm going to do this twice one two i'm going to come to where it says layer number one double click the word and i'm going to change this to be main color layer and then hit enter then i'm going to come to the top layer where it says layer one copy double click it and this one is going to be called main detail layer and hit enter now I'm going to turn off the main detail layer by hitting the eye icon that was on the left right there. Then I'm going to click the main color layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert what's called a stop. It's going to stop the process of the action and the action will not continue until you hit play again. So to insert a stop, we're going to come up to the little hamburger in the uh, actions window and then come down to insert stop. And then this window comes up and it says record stop and we can type a message to ourselves. This is what I want you to type or some version of this to direct you on what to do next to create our main color layer. So I'm going to write this message again, if whatever you want to write, it doesn't matter to me to create the main color layer, go to filter. 
and then slash noise median period choose a range of pixels from three to potentially seven pixels to blur the image period your goal is to think of shorter copy to put into this window. I'm just kidding. Your goal is to make sure that the leading lines of the subject are identifiable, identifiable, and not overly blurred, period. Then I'm going to hit OK. One little brief thing, do not check this box that says allow continue because the action will just continue running through and it needs you to stop because it needs you to do something, which is what we just wrote a novel typing out to do. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now the action has stopped and that stop is recorded. So I'm not going to actually do the step we just typed because if I did, the action is recording right now. So it would record me doing that. So I'm going to hit stop right now just to show you what that would be. We would come up to filter, come to noise, and then go to median. And it's going to bring up this dialog. Here's our range of pixels that we will choose. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit until I can see the model's face. At a range of three pixels, I can understand the leading lines of her face. I get where the eyebrow ends, the eye ends, and so forth. If I increase this to let's say seven pixels, I can still make it out and it, it, it makes sense. It's getting blurrier as we go, more blurry, blurrier, and that's okay. The goal is to make a color layer that is devoid of detail because that's the key and one of the powers of frequency separation. The details will be separated to another layer. So for instance, if I were to go to, let's say 20 pixels, now I can't really make out all the leading edges of her eye, where the top of the eyelid begins, where it ends, and the eyebrow was mixing with some of the colors of her eyebrow bone ridge. And I just don't know where it ends because that's too many pixels for the range. So let's go back to seven, not 207. Oh my goodness. Let's go to seven. We can still make it out. But what if we went to like five? This is a good view. We can make out all the leading edges. The colors are blurred, but it doesn't look like a hot mess the way it looked with 20 pixels. So there's not one set number. And this option right here, this step of the, of the process is dependent upon each image. It will change. That's why we included a stop in the action because it requires you to do this part. Now I'm going to hit cancel because I don't want to actually do this one step. You know what? I'm sorry. I giggled. I, I, I goofed. I am going to do this step. So I'm going to go to filter, noise, median, and let's go to five pixels and then hit okay. And now it's going to make our image just a little bit blurrier than what it looked like before. This is going to be our main color layer that we will work on in the technique of frequency separation. I'm going to hit control or command on the number zero to zoom all the way back out. And then I'm going to come back to the actions window and hit record again. And now it's going to start recording every step that I do. So I'm now going to come up to the main detail layer, click it to activate it. Click the eye icon to turn it back on. Then I'm going to come to image and come down to apply image. And then here are the options that you need to put into here. And this has to be precise where it says layer and it says merged. We're going to drop down to where it says main color layer and click that. Leave channel to RGB, click invert and make sure that it is checked. Then come down to blending and change this to add. And when you do, these two options are populated. Scale of two, offset of zero. Leave opacity to set to 100%. Whatever is in these two boxes, change it to be scale of two and offset to zero. So to recap, layer should say main color layer. Invert should be checked. Blending should be changed to add. Scale should be set to two. Zero should be put in the offset and then hit okay. Now we're going to change this layer's blending mode to linear light. I'm going to hit stop just to show you a brief demonstration of what frequency separation now does. If I zoom in, 
all three images are turned on. If I turn off these two and just look at the background layer, nothing changes. It's identical because we have separated the details to be on this main detail layer. And then we have put all the color onto one layer, which is the main color layer. And again, if you'd like to learn how to use this technique, make sure to visit the retouching series on this channel. So there's a couple of more things that we need to do to finish up this action. This technique, what we've done of a color layer and the detail layer, this is standard to pretty much any other tutorial, any other process that you would see for frequency separation by using the median noise version of frequency separation. Previous versions used Gaussian blur. We're using median noise. These next steps are my own design, and it's something that has helped me throughout the years of using frequency separation to make sure that I make good choices and also protect myself if I go too far. I have backups of everything. So again, we're gonna populate the layers. They may not make too much sense to you, but if you wanna learn how to use the technique, watch the videos in the retouching series. So I'm going to turn the recording back on for the action. Then I'm going to select main color layer and I'm going to duplicate it. Then I'm going to move it and I'm gonna change the name of it by double clicking the word first and call this one color layer backup and then hit enter. And then I'm going to move it in the layer stack by clicking it and holding it and dragging it down so that it is below the main color layer. Then I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to select the main color layer and I'm going to make a layer mask that is a reveal all layer mask or a white layer mask. To make that, I'm simply going to come down to the bottom of the layers window and click the layer mask icon and that'll put the white mask on top of it. Now I'm gonna to come to the bottom of the layer window again, and I'm going to click new layer icon, which will make a new blank layer. This new blank layer is now between the color layer and the detail layer. I'm going to double click the word layer one and change this one to say paint on this one and then hit enter. Then I'm gonna to come to the main detail layer itself, click it to select it. I'm going to duplicate it by hitting control or command and the letter J which will make a second copy of it. I'm going to double click the words to change the name of this layer. This one's going to be called main detail layer backup. Hit enter. And then I'm going to turn off this layer so we do not see it. And then the final thing I wanna do, the last thing that I want to be at the top of this layer stack is a black and white adjustment layer. So I'm gonna come down to the adjustment window icon in the layers window and then come to black and white. Click it, it will populate a black and white adjustment layer. We do not need to change any of its values and the properties, we can simply leave it the way it is. The last thing that I'm going to do, and keep in mind the action is still recording, I'm going to select the main detail layer, and then I'm going to hit S for the clone stamp tool, so that when the action is finished, it will populate all of these different layers, change all the different names, turn everything off, and then it's going to select the clone stamp tool and the detail layer because that's where you should begin when you're using frequency separation as a retouching technique inside of Photoshop. Once we're done with all of this, we need to make sure to come back to the actions window and then hit stop so that the action now is finished and let's test it just to make sure everything worked. So I'm gonna select all of these layers except for the background layer and delete them. And then I'm going to scroll to the top of this layer window, and these were all the steps, by the way, that it took. I'm gonna select frequency se separation 16-bit and then hit the play button. It'll populate the two layers. It'll tell us our 17 chapters of a message of what to do. Then we have to actually click stop. Then we'll come up and do what it told us to do. Filter, noise, median, five pixels. I think that looks good, I'm not sure, but we'll give it a go and see. I'm gonna hit okay. And then now to continue the action, after that stop, I just simply have to come up to the play button again, and it will continue playing the rest of the action from where it stopped within the different steps. Hit play, it populates all the different layers. Again, we're on the detail layer, and the clone stamp tool has been selected to start retouching the details within this image. So let's recap what we've done for this. We've simply created the action that populated all the different layers that are needed, including a stop, so that we have the option to then go do 
the very crucial part, which is to run media noise onto that color layer. And that is so dependent, all the other layers and the technique is dependent upon that. And it needs you to make that good judgment. Again, your goal is to make sure that all the leading edges within the subject of the image can be identifiable, but you're looking to make sure the details have been blurred out just enough so that you're dealing with just pure color and not details within themselves. Once the action is created, again, you can run it anytime that you need for any image. Frequency separation goes beyond just retouching a human being. You can retouch inanimate objects, buildings, landscapes, all kinds of things, all types of genres of photography. It's a very powerful technique in Photoshop. It's one of my favorites to retouch with and to create art with, and I highly recommend that you explore it and learn with it. Thank you for watching this video today. Again, help me grow this channel on YouTube by liking this video and subscribing. Make sure to hit the bell icon so you're notified when new videos are live on the channel. And until next time, I will see you out there in the world of Photoshop.